Hi guys, this is me Sam, Sam Huckle, and this audio is on sheet mulching, a technique used a lot in permaculture to create beds very quickly. I'll take a moment to introduce myself. I am a long-term permaculturist, did my first PDC permaculture design course in 2001. I have biodynamic gardening knowledge, um, and I've had a landscaping business that's been going since 2002, landscaping organically, focusing on indigenous plants, edibles, herbs, medicinals. I'm also a nurserywoman and I love propagating plants and I've been teaching organic and raw food and other workshops for many years. So I wanted to introduce myself so that you know that I'm coming from a permaculture perspective and I'll define permaculture for those who may not have heard of it before. Permaculture comes from the words permanent and agriculture or permanent and culture. And it's an entire design system for sustainable living. It is a philosophy and very much a way of life. And specifically and most importantly, it's a way of thinking. So one of the ways of one of the definitions of permaculture is the harmonious integration of the ecology, landscape and people, providing their food, energy, shelter and other material and non-material needs in a sustainable way. So permaculture is sometimes thought to be synonymous with organic veggie gardening, but please note that they are not the same thing at all. Permaculture is way bigger than organic veggie growing. It is also very much focused on perennial systems as opposed to annual systems, and veggie gardening works almost entirely with annual crops. So while veggie gardening is an aspect of permaculture, permaculture is way bigger. So sheet mulching is about creating as much bed space as you can so that you can grow as much food, herbs, medicinals as you can or want to as quickly as possible. So with sheet mulching, within a few hours, you can literally transform your entire lawn into sheet mulched beds and plant them. In brief, sheet mulching is a layering technique, requires resources up front and in bulk in the form of a whole lot of organic matter. The end result is a raised bed the beauty of sheet mulching is that you can do it on any surface, like a lawn, without digging the, digging the lawn out first, or a weedy area, even on a concrete slab or brick paving. So sheet mulching is like creating a compost heap above the ground and using that as your bed into which you plant. Your sheet mulch bed would not be as high as your compost heap though. Before I talk you through how to make a sheet mulched bed, I want to sell you on the concept. So here comes a list of 29 benefits of sheet mulching. Um, you will have access to this list, so don't worry about taking notes, um, as well as sheet mulching photos. So the benefits of sheet mulching are, it requires little labor. It's a no dig technique, so it preserves the soil profile and also soil life. Once the beds are set up, very little maintenance is required. Weed seeds lying dormant in the soil will be killed during the process of creating the beds, whereas digging would bring them to the surface where they would germinate. It does not remove valuable nutrients from the soil, which weeding would do. A large area can be done in a day or a couple of hours. The physical strength required to create sheet mulched beds is far less than digging soil. The beds can be created at any time of the year. It's inexpensive, even on a large scale. It's a way of recycling nutrients in your own garden. Any organic matter that you are taking to the dump site represents a loss of fertility for your garden. You are literally robbing yourself. So by sheet mulching, all of that fertility is retained in your own garden space. Sheet mulching rapidly builds topsoil. And the stats are that thanks to conventional agriculture and its habit of murdering soil, we are going to run out of topsoil globally in the next few decades. So being able to create topsoil is super important. Sheet mulching transforms poor soil. It adds rare micronutrients, prevents erosion, which is also super important. It keeps soil warmer in the colder months and cool in summer. It greatly increases the organic matter in your soil and hence biodiversity. It reduces nutrient loss, which means you don't need to feed your plants as much or as frequently. 
it buffers pH, so you don't have to worry about pH testing and pH adjusting. Provides long-term slow-release nutrient supply. Protects plants from soil splash. It recycles organic matter that would otherwise become part of the waste stream. So it reduces municipal garbage and recycling costs because your organic matter stays at home and doesn't require trucking or processing by the municipality. Uh, reduces taxes because if enough people do it, the dump site won't need as many vehicles, etc., to process the so called organic waste. It's very water wise, it drastically reduces soil moisture loss via transpiration, and also greatly reduces the need for watering. It increases the ability of water to percolate into the soil, so you're going to have less runoff, which is very important. Um, it increases total water held by your soil, creating healthier plants with less water requirements. The medium is light and fluffy, so roots can grow quickly. Um, and the sheet mulching beds also bioremediate toxic soils. Um, so it's an inexpensive way to return sick soils to health. The mulchy organic matter reduces uptake of heavy metals like lead, cadmium and other heavy metals and dilutes and encourages the breakdown of toxins. So that's a pretty important list, pretty impressive list. Sheet mulching can be done on pretty much any surface, including hard surfaces like concrete patio paving. So wherever you've got a corner of space that isn't being utilized, you can literally sheet mulch it up. Um, you just got to be creative with a little bit of edging and you've got your bed in an instant. So I'm going to step you through the setup of a sheet mulched bed um, as if you were doing it on a lawn. So by the way, a lawn is referred to as a green desert by permaculturists because it doesn't produce much food, it's constantly thirsty and it supports very little life. So yeah, permaculturists are not big fans of lawns. So step one. Design your entire garden, including your beds. Step two, gather your organic matter in bulk. So you will need lime and or bone meal, depending on your soil. Some chicken manure is helpful. Lots of cardboard or newspaper. Nitrogenous material, so nitrogenous organic matter. Carbonous organic matter. Some topsoil. Clean mulch to top the bed off with plants and or seeds that you wish to plant and some help some friends to make the job go faster if the grass is long you'll need to mow it first otherwise step four mark out the size and shape of the beds the bed can be as long as you want it can be straight or curved or even keyhole however the width generally doesn't exceed about 1.2 meters in other words if you stand on either side of the bed you want to be able to reach the center of the bed so that you can weed or harvest or plant without standing on the bed. So you want to avoid compaction um, because compaction negatively affects plant growth. If you want to make your bed wider than the 1.2, you can, it is possible. You just need to use stepping stones. And actually in the photos, um, you'll see that the beds that we made were wider than that. And we use tree trunks um, as stepping stones. You can use rocks or tires, whatever you need, just so that you avoid stepping or standing on the bed. So step five, we want to soak the bed, the bed area. So we want to soak the soil that's going to be underneath your sheet mulched bed. Um, the water will be locked in by the bed above it, um, but giving it a good soak up front beforehand helps the soil life to thrive and multiply underneath. Step six, you're going to sprinkle lime if your soil is acidic um, or bone meal um, and some chicken manure. Don't go heavy because chicken manure is really strong. Um, just a light dusting of chicken manure will give you the soil underneath um, your sheet bed a good fertility boost. So remember that over time the soil underneath the bed is going to be radically improved and eventually your plant roots will grow down into that soil. So that's why we're making sure, um, that's why we're treating the soil underneath with some lime and bone meal and chicken manure. Just make sure that it's got everything that it needs. Number seven, you're going to start laying your weed barrier layer. So this is your cardboard or newspaper. 
Um, you could also use old carpets or blankets, providing they are not synthetic and that they will break down over time. Um, and then start to lay your material down on top of the lawn in the shape of your bed. If using newspaper, you want to use a couple of sheets at once, at least five. Um, a single sheet is insufficient. Um, and the cardboard or the newspaper sheets need to be placed so that they overlap. So the idea is to stop any light from reaching the lawn. I'm sure you've all noticed what happens when a brick or a plank gets left lying on the grass. When you lift the brick up, depending on how long it's been lying there for, the grass underneath will either be dead or have turned yellow and be on its way to dying. Um, the cardboard or newspaper will kill off the grass underneath, that's the idea, and the grass will break down and fertilize the soil below and feed the earthworms so the grass is not wasted nor is your time and energy and labor in pulling the grass out. And anyway, um, it's almost impossible to weed grass like a kuyu or quirk out 100%. usually comes back. So it's important to get this uh, barrier layer step right, because if the grass does get sunlight, it will start to grow up into the bed. Um, yeah, so we want to really make sure that we get that weed barrier layer overlaid, overlapped very nicely so that there's no sunlight reaching there at all. So number eight, the next layer, this is the bulk of your bed, is the organic matter. So organic matter basically is anything that will eventually break down. So the idea is to use whatever you have available because basically you're recycling whatever you have available, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, if you don't have enough matter, you can um, ask your neighbors or the local um, horse yard um, or you can actually which I do quite regularly is go to the dump site and remove garden refuse and take it home with you so you can either layer your organic material in roughly 10 centimeter layers alternating a layer of carbon with a layer of nitrogen or which is my preference you can mix your material together um, instead of layering it so on the most basic level, all organic matter can be divided into two camps, nitrogen-rich organic material or carbon-rich organic material. So the nitrogen-rich material tends to be green and soft, so like grass cuttings or soft green leaves. Kitchen scraps are also included in this, um, as well as manure and urine. So carbon-rich materials are what we generally refer to as browns, brown materials such as wood, straw, dried leaves, paper, tree, branches, etc. So to encourage a healthy soil balance, you need both fungus and bacteria. And the fungus feeds on the carbon material and bacteria feeds on the nitrogen material. So the ratio of nitrogen to carbon is important. The best ratio is considered to be between 25 to 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. Too much carbon and the breakdown process slows down. You all know how long it takes for wood to break down basically and the quickest way that wood actually breaks down is in the forest where it rots um, in the presence of um, mycelium or fungi. So too much nitrogen and the result is likely to be the production of ammonia. Ammonia is a colorless gas with a characteristic pungent smell, which basically means if you've got ammonia, your nitrogen is escaping in the form of gas. You're losing your nitrogen, and that's what we don't want. We want you know, our nitrogen is precious. So here are suggestions for what you may use, divided into nitrogen and carbon. Um, and again, this list will be available to you. So the browns or carbon include shredded cardboard, shredded paper, straw, dried leaves, wood chips, branches, sawdust, and stable bedding. Um, so stable bedding is usually sawdust with a little bit of manure in it and, and some urine, um, but usually the sawdust predominates, um, and that's it. I mean, that's sawdust, that's wood, so that's more carbon. So I, I include it in the carbon and not in the nitrogen category. So in your greens or nitrogen category, we've got horse manure or other manure. Um, you've got soft green garden prunings. You've got lawn mowings, which need to be free of dog poop. That's quite important. Seaweed is incredible in terms of its number of nutrients. Um, it's very, very nutrient rich. 
and the sticky quality that seaweed has that fresh kelp for example has is incredible it's fantastic stuff um, and we've got something called the death bucket a death bucket is basically where you take weeds that are very hard to eradicate like grasses um, that usually will regrow from the smallest piece of root throw them in a bucket of water and leave for about two months until they form a liquid goop so basically everything inside is dead at that point um, and then you can use that then um, on your sheet mulch beds it's highly nutritious um, yeah and it's high nitrogen so comfrey um, the plant is considered a dynamic accumulator comfrey's incredible root system mine deeply collecting nutrients that would usually be unavailable to plants with lesser root systems so those nutrients are then made available to other plants by using the comfrey leaves to make compost or as mulch in the sheet mulch bed or as a tea and then nettle is also highly highly nutritious uh, and yarrow is another very good herb to make use of so kitchen waste is lumped under nitrogens but it's not generally recommended to use kitchen scraps because they are likely to attract rats the greater the variety of organic materials that you create your bed out of, the greater the array of nutrients that will be available to your plants, and hence ultimately you, in particular the micronutrients. So step nine is to finish the bed with a layer of clean mulch. Clean mulch is basically mulch that is free from seeds. So straw works really well for this. The final height of your bed should be around 60 centimeters. Remember that all the organic matter contains a lot of air and so over time the whole bed will subside quite substantially. And we want a good 30 centimeters for plant roots to grow in so 60 centimeters is, is a good height to begin with. Um, you'll want to gently tamp the bed down with a garden rake to get some of that excess air out. Um, we want to avoid plant roots growing into and encountering air pockets you know, as they're growing because the roots will not be very happy about that at all they'll actually die off so give the bed a good soak um, and you are now basically ready to plant so to plant a seedling you're going to make a hole in the top layer of mulch reaching down to the organic matter below and you're going to fill this hole with topsoil the amount of soil that you use is just sufficient for the roots to have something to start growing in um, so it's basically just to anchor them in and once the plants started growing the roots will very quickly spread into the surrounding um, organic matter and mulch. Plant the seedling into the topsoil, firm the plant into place and pull the mulch back around the plant. I always like to leave a small mulch free space or a gap around the stem of any plant to avoid the stem rotting and to avoid harboring pests right up against the stem. So to plant seeds, um, you can plant large seeds, but um, the sheet mulching technique doesn't work so well for small seeds. You're going to create a long trench in the top layer of mulch, either across the bed, across the width of the bed, or along the length. And then you're going to fill this with soil and add your seeds to the soil. Do not cover the seeds with mulch. Once the seeds have reached seedling size, you can then mulch, tuck mulch around them. And then very gently water the plants or the seeds that you've just planted. So while there are so many pros to the sheet mulching, as with anything, there are also some cons. So there are some crops that sheet mulching won't work for. Um, and a couple of cautionaries. Sheet mulching is not ideal for small seeds. Um, it's not ideal for root crops other than potatoes. So it works very well for potatoes. But things like carrots, um, it's not going to work very well for. And carrots need a, a much firmer anchor. Um, also for a very tall crop like maize, where the roots need to be anchored very securely into soil to support the above ground weight and structure, it's not going to work. The organic matter may attract unwanted decomposers or provide accommodation for pests. Um, because we are making use of mulch, which is partially decomposed organic matter so it's not completely decomposed which means decomposers are going to be around um, and obviously we just want to make sure that the balance is in our favor that they're eating the mulch or the organic matter and not our plants 
So mulch cools the soil down. This may slow down the growth of annuals in spring. So maybe you want to thin the topmost layer or take the mulch off um, to get a good warm start in spring. If you're sheet mulching on top of a clay soil, you do need to be aware of drainage, possible drainage issues. So it's advisable to use a layer of twigs or very rough mulch on top of your weed barrier layer for drainage. Over time, the clay soil will aerate beautifully and improve fabulously, but initially that extra drainage is required. Be aware of the possibility of damp if creating sheet mulch beds against the walls of your house. It is better to leave a gap between wall and bed. Slugs and snails may like the moisture. However, they don't enjoy crawling over rough mulch. Um, so keep that in mind for your topmost layer of mulch. If you do have um, slug or snail issues, then don't go so much for straw, but rather use a really rough um, bark mulch, like a pine bark. Um, the other option is to sprinkle around your plants with crushed eggshells. It's very nasty, but the sharp edges will actually cut into the slugs and snails and they will dehydrate. So never ever use human, dog, cat or any other carnivorous animal manure under or around your annual vegetables or as a surface mulch because they all carry parasites and bacteria that are harmful to gardeners and fresh food consumers. And remember also that overuse of any manure can lead to substantial runoff and can contaminate the water supply. So that's pretty much it. I'm sure there will be a lot of um, questions. Once you've had time to work through the lists and look at all the pictures, then let's go ahead and compile a list um, of all the questions and then we, yeah, we can do a Q&A on that. So yeah, in, in the meantime, good luck and happy gardening.